So just, just a quick intro to Expo and, and then I'll get on to the main topic. So for those of you not familiar with Expo, we've, we've been around for about 35 years. We've, we've got about 2000 people worldwide and, and we deliver solutions to most of the, of the leading telcos across the globe. We've got a big intellectual property portfolio over 560 patents covering all the different domains, technologies, test and measurement solutions and so on. Uh, basically, what we do increasingly with customers is, is accelerate digital transformations. Basically, that means we, we address all technologies, network types and layers and to help our, our CSP customers transform the way they, they manage the shadow services and, and their network. Uh, to align with what our customers need and, and general industry trends, almost everything we do now is, is focused on automation. So it's automating tests, measurements and, and processes, operational processes mainly uh, with our customers. So we kind of categorize ourselves into two main types of solution. We've got test and measurement solutions and we've got service assurance solutions. We call them ASA or adaptive service assurance solutions. Two main kind of categories of, of what we do. Uh, in terms of the, the different uh, layers and types of tests, you, you, you can see it's a large selection on the screen. You'll be glad to hear that today we're just going to focus just on, on a couple of those, uh, real-time analytics and topology. Uh, and that leads us into nicely our, our subject for today, which is telco service assurance for cloud-based services. So. I don't know about the audience on, on the call today, but I'm old enough to remember the, the 1990s and 2000s when, when you bought a network function, you bought a proprietary appliance. So it was a pre-built combination of hardware and software that did a specific job in the network. But the challenge is that the world is getting more complex for us. So not only do we have to handle a lot of those legacy appliances are still around, uh, we have gone through phases of virtualization. So virtualization introduced more complexity in the sense we had more layers of technology involved in delivering a network function. So we no longer had a single box that was deployed somewhere on the network that was delivering services. We had a, uh, a set of virtual infrastructure that was hosting multiple virtualized network functions. Uh, and therefore we had more layers to worry about when it came to understanding what the performance of the function was and where the problems were. With cloud network functions, we, we now have additional layers of complexity. We've now introduced more virtualization and more complexity. So today, for example, we now have pods, nodes and clusters to worry about, as well as virtualization layers of hypervisors and so on. So the world is getting more complex. And from a service assurance perspective, what does that mean? It now means that we have many more data sources. There's many more places in the network that are generating interesting data, data that will tell us something about how the services are performing, how the network's performing, and how to understand what the root cause of service problems is. So our job in terms of service assurance and operating the network has, has got more complex as these complexities have increased and the layers have increased. And it's only going to get worse. So. There's a, a few logos you see in the right hand side there of, of additional technologies, additional complexities that are rolling out today. So there are many examples there of, of disaggregation. So where previously we had single functions, single network functions, we're now disaggregating those for many different reasons, uh, mainly to, to try and decommoditize and, and make things less proprietary. Uh, so we have ORAN, for example, which is disaggregating RAN access. We have 5G, which is introducing slicing, uh, where we have a virtualized service across multiple different domains. We have SIBA, SDN enabled broadband access and, and open broadband together, which are, are disaggregating fixed network access technology. So all these things are additional layers of complexity, additional functionality, and make, generally life is not going to get simpler for telco service assurance. Life is, is getting more complex and, and getting more challenging. So every time we introduce more complexity, we're creating new and wonderful ways for failures and things to go wrong. Uh, for cloud-based services, 
you could look at the noisy neighbor as an example. So cloud-based services or the, the way the cloud works, as, as you probably know, is, is focused on sharing workloads, sharing, sharing a set of resources across multiple workloads. We're trying to get economy of scale. The noisy neighbor problem is one we can expect to see cropping up a lot is where a, a workload misbehaves. Usually this is a software error or often a configuration error and basically means that uh, one workload is negatively impacting the performance of an adjacent workload. So a workload is sharing the same resource. So for example, a shared CPU cache. And traditionally, it's very hard to find and diagnose that type of problem, unless you happen to be looking at the right infrastructure performance KPI at the same time as a service KPI, then you're unlikely to notice a correlation between the service failure and the particular piece of the infrastructure you're looking at failing or having a problem. And even less likely to be able to identify which of your cloud network functions is the noisy neighbor, which, which workload is impacting the other. That's just one example of a, of a cloud operations complexity problem. It, it's, it's one well-known pattern. Uh, it's been around in the IT world for many years. And as telcos roll out cloud-based services, we're seeing examples of this in, in the telco world. But there are many other ways the complexity can impact telco service performance in the cloud. It, it's the inherent complexity of the cloud itself, all those additional layers of abstraction that gives us the challenge to be able to reliably and successfully operate those services in the cloud. So to address that, we could, of course, add lots of people to our operations team, people to look at all those new dashboards we need, to look at all those new data sources, people who could perform the correlations between the different problems we're seeing and to make sense of all that rich set of data. But that's not going to fly, obviously, because generally operations teams don't have an unlimited budget. I'm sure those of you who work in operations team will, will sympathize with that. So the answer, of course, is automation. We need to automate the operational tasks. We need to be able to use intelligent automation to replace that small army of experts we need to make sense of all the data and all the complexity, all those additional layers, all the abstraction and virtualization. So that's that's a nice theory. How do we do it in practice? What what are what are the key components? What are the key technologies, key solution components that allow us to address these challenges and to automate operations? Well, we're going to look at two of those enablers today. We can think of a telco cloud as as multiple layers. So there's usually groups of those layers are managed by separate platforms. So for example, there might be a virtual infrastructure manager or VIM that manages how the virtual server resources are deployed. So the layers between the bare metal and those virtual hosts. And we might have a cloud orchestrator that uses the virtual hosts to run containers and the cloud network functions that are in those containers. So let's introduce a couple of components. Let's, these are our key automation components here. So first we have a, a real-time technology, uh, sorry, <clears throat> excuse me, a real-time topology component. This is responsible for capturing the relationships across all the layers of the telco cloud from the service layer down to the bare metal. And the second component is called anomaly detection, where we use some intelligent automated analysis techniques to identify problems, correlate those together and diagnose them. So two components working together. How do they work together? Well, first of all, we feed the topology component with configuration data from the infrastructure manager and from the telco cloud orchestrator. So what the topology component does is it builds a real-time topology model of the telco cloud. In effect, we're creating a digital twin of that whole stack. We can then deliver that digital twin information topology relationship structure to the anomaly detection component 
So the anomaly detection component can then use that topology and understand those relationships to say which anomalies might be related to one another and to diagnose those together to, to identify root cause. Meanwhile, the anomaly detection component is taking real-time streams of performance data, performance metrics or KPIs from the management systems. And we use automated analysis techniques, machine learning basically, to identify anomalies within those KPI values. We can also use service assurance systems because they're generally, we, we find a set of those. Every customer we, we, we deploy the solution in. There's always either probes or uh, test systems that are generating a valuable independent measurement of service performance. And we can feed those real-time metrics into the anomaly detection. So we have a complete set of infrastructure, network and service metrics that together are correlated together to give us good insights as to, to what is happening in the network. And these components work together to give a completely automated stream of information. Basically, uh, we identify the anomalies, we correlate those together into groups that are related through topology. We deliver a root cause indicator, which where we use the relationships between those different layers to indicate which resource is likely to be the root cause of that anomaly group. And we deliver an automated diagnostic statement in basically saying which other services or CNFs might be impacted and a recommended action. So basically what we're doing with these two components is delivering a rich set of data to be consumed by a service orchestrator or a automated assurance workflow that might trigger some additional tests or even by a ticketing system if, if manual analysis and decision making is, is required or appropriate. At the end of the day, what the combination of components is doing is reducing millions and millions of, of KPI values that we get from the network in terms of those performance KPIs. It's taking the topology data with all the relationships that model the, the whole stack. And we're reducing all that information down to a manageable and actionable set of interesting information. Things that are valuable, things that tell you something interesting about the services, tell you something about the root cause, tell you some action you can take. So if you look at those components in, in a bit more detail, starting with the real-time topology solution. So today we use this solution in many different places in the network, from the core, through transport network, access network. We use it to capture the different services that are deployed on top of the network and infrastructure. Cloud is, is just the, the latest in a long history of different network service and technology domains that we've successfully modeled with the topology solution. So there are two parts to, to this solution. There's a modeler and a runtime. The modeler is used to explore the data sources interactively. So the data sources are from the infrastructure, the services, the core network, transport network, access network, wherever we can find that set of information we need to deliver the particular use case we're looking for. So for a cloud network, for example, we're looking for the virtual infrastructure manager and the cloud orchestrator to give us the information on the structure of the services and how those are overlaid, virtualized on top of the, the infrastructure. So for example, uh, we might capture that set of information from the telco cloud orchestrator and the virtual infrastructure manager. We might capture the set of business rules that define how we interpret that configuration data to build the model. So the business rules might tell us, for example, what the naming conventions are for the virtual machines, or another example, how to identify a particular pod associated with a KS replica set. Once we've built the model, and the set of business rules, we then deliver that to the runtime platform. So the runtime then connects to the live data sources and builds the digital twin based on the models and business rules we, we captured earlier. Uh, and this stage is where we discover all the elements. We discover 
all the entities within the network and services, and we link them together using our graph database technology. There are a couple of ways to consume that topology information once we built it. We have a user interface and we have an API. So the, the UI is useful for cases where we need a human to be involved in a process. Most use cases we realize through the API because that's the way automated use cases are delivered. So typical integrations via the API are, are usually service managers, service orchestrators, automated workflows or, or ticketing systems. Topology data is also really useful for service assurance. As if, as you know, if, if we know the relationships and connectivity between network sources, infrastructure and services, that gives us a very deep and detailed understanding of cause and effect. Once we know that, we can identify the root cause of problems we see. And the runtime usually hosts a number of use case modules focused on specific types of topological analysis. So some of the most common modules are shown here. Uh, example would be the optimum path module where we use topology data to identify the best path to provision a service over the network. So we can use key metrics or measures like uh, redundancy, level of redundancy or security of the service. We can use latency to provision the, the uh, lowest latency path, for example, if we have a specific service that requires that for to meet an SLE. Or increasingly hot topic with our customers is, is provisioning services to reduce power consumption. So by knowing all the possible connectivity paths involved and what the energy cost is, for example, for each of those, we could select the one that's most appropriate for the use case we're looking for. So it's an example of, of one of the use case modules. And as the network and services evolve, the data sources are going to change. They're going to evolve. So as those change over time, it's important we're able to evolve the models and the business rules we've captured to maintain that alignment between the topology system and the underlying data sources. So again, we use the modeler for that, uh, assisted by the runtime component. So the runtime component is able to tell us which data read from the network didn't match the model didn't match our business rules. And it's important to periodically review that follow data to identify any model or rule changes that we need. And the platform makes this quite easy for us. So that was the topology component. Let's move on to the anomaly detection component. So here, the concept is to automatically analyze the data from multiple domains, multiple layers, and identify problems. So we stream key measurement data in real time from each layer or domain into the platform. Uh, we're, note that we're not streaming all the measurement data. So this isn't a data lake type approach or a big data approach. We're much more selective here where we use our domain knowledge to identify just the key set of metrics for each domain or each layer. We only stream those and analyze those. Uh, interesting to note that the measurements we use, they're usually already available in the network. So somewhere there's usually a performance management system that is collecting those and storing them in a, a database, or we have a statistics collector, uh, or there's a service assurance probing system or test system that's generating the data. But generally, these are all sets of data, KPIs, measurements that we find available in the network today. So we use machine learning on those KPI values to identify the anomalies in real time. We have a configurable and, and tutable set of rules to do that. Uh, and we identify where those KPI values are abnormal. Uh, for each anomaly, we create a case and we then correlate those cases together into case groups. So we have a configurable set of rules. We use things like uh, time, uh, we use topology, of course, and we use dimensions to create those case groups to correlate these anomalies together. Because when we're presenting the information to an orchestrator or to a human, it's much easier for them to understand how that anomaly relates to the big picture if we've already correlated all related problems together into a single group. And we use the topology information to trigger some automated diagnosis where we use the 
individual cases together as a group to identify the root cause. And the topology tells us the cause and effect relationships within the group across the network and the services to make that, that judgment. So we're using topology not only to correlate, but also to identify the root cause. And then we can deliver those enriched anomaly case groups to a consumer. So either the operations team via user interface, automated workflow, ticketing system, service orchestrator. But the, the point here is the whole process is, is automated end to end. So very quick overview of those two components. Hopefully that's given you a, a better understanding of the real-time topology and anomaly detection components. XO, we've, we've, we've deployed these components with many customers over many years, solving different network problems, service complexity problems across different network types, fixed, mobile, different technologies, different layers, lots and lots of different use cases, lots of more stories to, to share. Uh, telco cloud assurance is just the latest domain that we're applying these same patterns to. And you'd be pleased to hear it works well. So, Earlier this year, we delivered our TM Forum Catalyst project together with Telia, Telecom Italia, and a few other vendors. The title was, was rather elaborate. It was uh, Revolutionizing Service Assurance Through AI-Powered Intent-Based Systems for Continuity and Customer Satisfaction. That's a bit of a mouthful. Uh, if you click on the link, you'll get some more detailed information on the project. But basically, it was all about addressing the complexity issues around service assurance for telco cloud-based services. And as you can see, it was rather successful as a project. Uh, we got awarded as a, as a finalist in the Outstanding Catalyst Business Impact category, and we won the Outstanding Catalyst Showcase category. So from a TM Forum perspective, it was a very successful and highly visible Catalyst project. In terms of the, the, how the actual project worked, what we delivered in the lab, basically we connected with uh, VMware, vRealize operations, VR ops. We got topology information from that, performance data from the private cloud infrastructure. And on the cloud orchestration side, we connected with VMware Telco Cloud Automation, TCA. Uh, this is our unified orchestrator for uh, topology and performance data from the cloud network functions. Uh, and how did it look? Uh, I've, I've included a few screenshots here. Uh, so this is how it looked like within the topology component. Here we see the different classes of entities in the model from the cloud network functions down to the servers. Selecting the VoIP service cloud network function, we can then select the CNF topology view. And then we see the CNF in more detail. So here we see the KS namespace, the three constituent services for that VoIP CNF. So we have a node port, a cluster IP, and an asterisk metric service. We see the related KS replica set and the KS pod that's connected with that. We can, by selecting the pod on the UI, we can see the live status of the pod. Along with information, we see where it's currently running in the infrastructure. So we see which particular VM and which host the pod is currently running on. So here, even though we're looking at the CNF view, you can see the, how we've captured, how we understand which particular resource in the infrastructure this particular pod is running on. If we select the, the VROps topology view, we get a more infrastructure focused view. Previously, we we're looking at the CNF. This, this is a kind of infrastructure view. So it's the same topology data looking at it from a different angle, different perspective. If we select a particular entity to look at, in this case, we'll select the whole TCA workload. And we then get a view of all the containers, pods, cloud network functions, and namespaces related to that particular resource we selected. So a bit of an eye test chart, I'm afraid there. If you zoom in a little bit, you can see some of the detailed relationships captured in the topology between the, the TCA entities. 
selecting an entity gives us a current live status. In this case, it's the same KS pod we looked at on the CNF topology view. But with this view, we see it in relation to all the other pods, the other replica sets, namespaces, and CNFs. Almost all the use cases of this topology information are automated. So it's not the UI that's important here, but it's the ability to capture in real time all these relationships between the infrastructure and the CNF layers together in one place. So hopefully you can understand how viable this information is when it comes to understanding the performance of the stack and, and service assurance work in particular. Take a step back and, and thinking about the overall approach here. What we're doing really is we're automating many of those operational processes that have traditionally been done manually. And we can think of automation as, as a journey where the end goal is to be able to put our feet up on the desk and, and let the network and the services run themselves. So a completely autonomous network. If you look at TM Forum, they, they've got a, a, a maturity model, if you like, or, or a, a level of, of breaking down those the, the journey to autonomous networks into six different levels. So they've got level zero where everything's manual, up to level five where the network is fully autonomous and we have our feet on the desk. Most telco service providers today are probably around level two. So usually the, we find isolated islands of autonomy. For example, you might have an SDN controller that's managing one small section of services overlaid on the network. That's usually fairly autonomous running itself. Everything else is a bit more complex and, and there's a lot of legacy technologies around which mean Autonomy is still a long way away. So in our journey to, to be more autonomous, there are two key components, obviously, that will help us get up this level of maturity within the TM forum model. So if firstly, if we want to automatically fix problems as they happen, we have to look for them. So anomaly detection is key. So we need to automatically analyze key metrics in real time, identify anomalies, correlate them together using time, topology, and dimensions, create auto-diagnosed case groups that can then be consumed by the domain or service orchestrators to take some action. And the second solution we need is to understand the connectivity and relationships between the infrastructure, the resources, and the services. And that's what the topology component brings. So we use topology to help correlate those anomalies we find together and to identify root cause. And the orchestrators can also use topology to identify the impact of any automated changes and to ensure they won't leave us worse off than when we started. So topology is key to making intelligent decisions autonomously in the network. So that's the TM forum perspective. The Exfil perspective and automated assurance. This is my personal view. Uh, basically, we start with a rich set of data sources. So we've got to build on a good foundation good of quality data. We're not trying to build a data lake here, as I mentioned earlier. We're still trying to focus on a small subset of KPIs that tell us useful information about infrastructure, network and service performance. And generally that means we need something with high dimensionality. So typically service assurance systems like probing systems or test systems will generate this set of data. Uh, the type of data that's generally not particularly useful is, is alarms, events and logs because generally they don't have many dimensions. So the more dimensions we have, then the more ways we can relate the measurements and indications to network entities, to service identifiers, Dimensionality gives us a richer set of data for analysis. So together with the data sources, we have real-time streaming analytics. This is the anomaly detection component described earlier. There we're using real-time streaming analysis. We're using fixed or adaptive thresholds to analyze the KPIs. We use unsupervised machine learning. We do some statistical analysis. We have smoothing, normalization, so on. Basically, we're aimed at aiming at reducing the false positives due to repeating problems. And we're doing automated correlation using topology, for example, into case groups. The third component is the automated topology. So here, we're building a knowledge graph, capturing the key relationships between the different layers, the different domains, the elements, the services, and the customers 
uh, and delivering that information for multiple use cases. So that's the third component in the journey to automated assurance. The fourth component is deep learning. So deep learning is useful for interactively exploring the set of problems we've identified for clustering analysis, for example, to see if there's some insights that we haven't yet discovered in the data set. Uh, and we generally use a, a workbench, a user interface, and a platform to automate those analysis tasks. And the last component is the workflow automation engine. So where we're feeding the data that we generate from our automated assurance solution into a workflow to allow rules-based triggering of actions and perhaps additional tests, additional service assurance actions, as well as providing information to orchestrators or ticketing systems. So at the end of the day, the five things together give us the journey to automated assurance and give us the solution to addressing the Telco Cloud Service Assurance Complexity Challenge. One key differentiator I'll, I'll mention quickly is, is that from the EXO perspective, we see topology as more important than the deep learning approach. So training a neural network to recognize past problems will give you some good insights when those problems repeat again, the same patterns occur again, but it won't tell you much about new problems if those new problems don't match those old patterns that you've trained your network for. So we see topology as the key component to an accurate analysis, accurate way of capturing those complex relationships between the infrastructure, the network and the services. And lastly, here's a few links for items I mentioned this morning, uh, subjects you might be interested in. Uh, please reach out to me if you have any questions on this, uh, if you have any alternative thoughts or approaches. Uh, if you want to understand more about TM Forum Catalyst project or about in more detail about Exfo's service assurance components, particularly anomaly detection or real-time topology.